So this is the acid catalyzed aldol reaction mechanism and we'll see that it follows all the same principles that we've seen before. So first step is that protonation. And while the chloride could be the base in the next step to generate the enol, the solvent is in very large excess and so it's much more likely to act as the base here to collide with that alpha proton. And we generate the enol. And so now we have protonated solvent around. We have a weak nucleophile. We have a weakly electrophilic species, so no reaction yet. That carbonyl could be protonated though. And so now we have still a weak nucleophile, but now we do have an activated electrophile. So we can have that cyclization reaction when those two sites collide, and so it'll be the alpha carbon. Actually, maybe we'll renumber right from that carbonyl. So where was the carbonyl? The carbon of the enol. So we're making a five-membered ring, a new bond between two and six. Carbon two, oops, this is carbon one. And carbon six has the hydroxyl. And then solvent can deprotonate. Okay, and so that would be the neutral final product, but remember that acidic conditions are one of the conditions that favor condensation or elimination. Same thing with having a protic solvent. So in fact, what we expect that that pathway certainly can happen, but reversibly. <laughs> And eventually we can have solvent deprotonating, generating a second enol. which can collide with that proton, get protonated.
And then we eliminate water, that very good leaving group. just a final step, that deprotonation gives us that neutral final product. So now there's a conjugated system quite stable and so the equilibrium goes toward not only is unidirectional for that carbon-carbon bond forming step but ultimately goes to, down towards this very stable product that has the conjugated alkene. Okay so the acid catalyzed aldol reaction mechanism we've gone through positively charged and neutral species uh, initially when we generated the, when the enol was generated, it was a weak nucleophile, weak electrophile. Nothing could happen until that other carbonyl was activated. And then carbon-carbon bond forming was irreversible. Yes, it could be deprotonated, but reversibly. We go through a second enol, which ultimately then after water is generated, can eliminate to give a conjugated final product. Okay, one last note at the very start, it was the more basic carbonyl that was protonated first, and it was the more electrophilic carbonyl that acted as the electrophile in the reaction. So in this video, we're going to look at uh, how to analyze aldol products in a retrosynthetic sense, or in reverse. Let's remind ourselves that with the forward aldol reaction, so a reaction that'll generate an enolate or an enol, reacting with a carbonyl electrophile, generating that new carbon-carbon bond, Okay, remembering the new bond forms at that alpha carbon and then can be either protonated and the reaction stops there or if the reaction uh, continues either in conditions of a protic solvent uh, with heat represented by delta uh, time or under acidic conditions can eliminate that hydroxyl group and give the conjugated alkene product. In all of these cases, notice that there's a what's called a 1-3 relationship between the substituents and the product. So the main aldol product, one for the carbonyl, two for that alpha carbon, and three for the hydroxyl site. Same thing in the alkene, one, two, and three. And that 1-3 pattern is very characteristic of aldol products. 